Let me take you back to 1960. Mattel has just launched Barbie. The Mad Men are revolutionizing car advertising. And you can still smoke in your office. If you work at a brand in 1960 and you're trying to create the next greatest product, then you've got to be able to predict what your customers want. So you go out and talk to them. You stand in a mall and hand out questionnaires. You run a focus group. You do market research. Fast forward 60 years later to today, and companies still need to talk to their customers, and they still do it in exactly the same way. So think of the things that you bought this week. I got some new clothes, a pair of headphones, a can of Coke. Almost all the things that you bought would have been created out of a discussion with small groups of people using pretty much the same techniques as 60 years ago. And that isn't because they work. They frequently don't. The reality is the vast majority of new products fail. The wrong things just get built. And so we live in a world that is biased away from innovation towards promotion. Last year, we spent $500 billion on advertising. And that's money that is being used to convince us what to buy, but that does next to nothing to actually improve the product. And companies are constantly spamming us, telling us what we want. And it works. You're actually looking at a man who now buys more expensive shampoo than he did when he had a full head of hair. <laughs> that is a true story. So what if the world was less wasteful? What if we could create a future where all the energy that we currently spend on advertising was instead spent on making a better product? A future where companies were so good at listening to us that their innovation replaced the need for advertising altogether. In that future, marketing isn't about pushing and promotion. It's about managing the flow of information between those that make products and those that consume products. Now, I believe that this future is possible. And the key is our relationship with artificial intelligence. At the very core of AI, we're trying to create machines that learn. Machines that learn in many ways like you and I do. And in fact, one of the main things that these machines need to learn about is us. But whilst you and I are pretty limited on the number of people that we can learn about at the same time, the machines that we're designing can observe and interact with millions of people simultaneously. They can combine that knowledge and form very accurate models about how each of us behaves. And there are plenty of these machines already on the internet, constantly learning about us watching what we click on, what we buy, who we connect with. And the longer they watch, the better they get at predicting where we might click next, what we might like to buy, who our friends might be. We're used to this whole idea of what we've now become, has become known as personalization. Highly tuned adverts chases around the internet. However, the products they are selling don't get better. And so we're back to where we were in 1960. Sure, we're far more connected now, but our personal data is being used in a way that we can't readily track to form incredibly sophisticated models of our purchasing behavior. And those models are then used to convince us to buy more things. And they still do not improve the product that we're trying to create. It creates a lot of value for businesses, but nowhere near enough value for us consumers. So last year, we set about trying to rethink this. We wanted to see if in the future, the most effective brands are the ones that talk to their customers not to make better advertising, but to share ideas. We thought that they'd use artificial intelligence to help real people and brands talk to each other. And we wanted to prove this in an industry which people have very strong views on, and that which we had a pretty significant interest in as well, beer. So we created Intelligent X, the world's first beer brewed by AI. By incorporating AI into the brewing process, we have created a product that automatically changes its recipe based on the needs of the consumers. A beer that continually adapts to the changing tastes of the people drinking it. Now that is what I call personalization. And it works very simply. On one side, algorithms are deciding which ingredients to use, how long to cook things for. And on the other, 
They're asking questions for the people actually drinking the beer, questions about the taste, questions about what things they'd like to change, gathering feedback. And all the uh, person drinking the beer has to do is follow a link printed on the bottle, and the algorithm starts talking to them. So by combining these two sides, product and consumer, if you like, left brain and right brain, what we have created are algorithms that learn which recipes work and which don't. They learn which ideas to try in the future and which to retire. They learn what to make for individuals, and they learn what to make for groups. Now, I think the real beauty in this whole thing is that we've taken something inherently artificial and complex, and we've brought the whole process of creation and mass consumption back to its core human components. There is a direct visceral connection between the craftsman and the consumer, almost as if they were in the same room. Now, whilst we want to take and exploit the wisdom of the crowd, it isn't as simple as averaging. And in fact, the key complexity is being able to interpret what each individual says. Unfortunately, we're not all as wise as each other, and so we have to be careful whose opinion we take and whose we don't. But that's where AI really comes in, because it learns which questions to ask to which people, and it learns how to understand the answers. So when, after one of our early beers, we, the algorithms asked people whether they'd like more or less alcohol in the recipe, the vast majority of people said they wanted a stronger beer. So we made a stronger beer. And what happened? People actually liked it less. So the algorithms learned an important lesson. Well, they learned that we're a nation of alcoholics, of course, right? <laughs> but by making a mistake and seeing what happened, they learned to better interpret people in the future. The algorithms aren't perfect. They do make mistakes. But by exploring and gathering feedback, they learn not to make them again. They learn by doing. They learn by trying things over and over again, iterating and changing. I believe that it is in creating a constantly changing product that the solution to all these problems lie. Without change, there are no mistakes for our AI to learn from, no mistakes for us to learn from. Without change, we can't explore the whole universe of product possibilities. We can't make things better. And without change, we end up selling the same thing again and again and again. And actually, that's what it's come down to. We go back to advertising instead of innovating. So the beer is always changing. We started with one beer, which became four beers. And those four beers spawned a further 18 different iterations, all of them different. I was talking to someone the other day, and I was explaining that we never make the same batch twice. That if you loved one of these beers, then you're going to have to go home and make it yourself. And he looked at me like I was crazy. What if you, through all that, discovered that there was a perfect beer? You discovered the perfect beer. And the answer is simple. I don't believe that we can make a perfect beer. That isn't to say that we can't make a perfect beer. I don't believe it exists. And that comes down to people. People want to try new things. They're obsessed with the idea that there's something better out there that they haven't yet had. Above all, they want new experiences. So we have to keep on creating. It's all about people. And really, all this is about people. I started working in AI because I was interested in people. I was interested in the way the human brain works, how we interact with each other. I am interested in AI not because it can replace us, but because it can bring us closer together. Human creativity is still very much at the heart of this process. But the crucial difference now is when the brewer says, I have an idea, an AI responds and says, well, let's go and check it out if it's a good one, and replace brewing with any type of product innovation you care to imagine. By using artificial intelligence, we can eradicate the deep inefficiencies of today. This is a road to a future full of new experiences, not just tastes and smells. And whilst a few of us may end up getting run over by self-driving cars, it will be AI that gets us there. The madmen can finally be disrupted because we have a choice. 
We all know that artificial intelligence is going to change our lives. But what is clear now is, in terms of the how and the when of change, it will be up to the people to decide. Thank you very much.